Uh, gradient, it's easy to see that when you take, let's forget for a second, when you take a function, if you dilate the function and you take the difference with the original or the difference with the, uh, with, with a small erosion, if you want, that is more symmetrical, uh, then we have a change just when you arrive at the edges. The initial function here is made of several cylinders because it's better for the sake of pedagogy. So we see that it is flat, no change. The gradient is zero. Here there is a change. So when you dilate, uh, when you erode, if you want, if you are not far away from the edges, it will become what the one will become zero. So when you make the difference, you have something which appears. The same if you make a dilation. So the gradient appears by the difference between the function dilated and the function root. Or you could take the function dilated minus the function if you have more outside the things, or if you are more inside things, take that one. But the, it's the same function. And the, that last one is the erosion of the erosion, or it is the gradient of the gradient. Thank you. Again, uh, questions? Bon, on s'arrête un petit peu. Quelle heure il est 2h25. 2h25. Je veux dire, il faut faire des TP parce que sinon, vous, euh, ça, ça commence à devenir un peu hard. Ce qu'on peut faire, c'est au moins regarder la notion d'après, parce que la notion d'après, c'est l'ouverture qui, qui, quand même, qui est tellement dans la ligne de ce qui précède. Vous n'avez pas trop sommeil un peu. Et après, on fait les TP. <rire> D'accord. Bon, on va quand même aller jusqu'au bout. Mais... Bon, on s'arrêtera un petit moment avant les deux heures, parce que je reconnais que c'est dense. Euh... That's... That is a direct uh, consequence of what we have seen. Uh, when you make an opening. Oh, sorry. When you make an erosion, you start from that. And you erode. That is the structuring element. You start with that. The structuring element cannot enter here, so disappear. Cannot enter here, disappear also. But it can enter into the big disk, and since they are both disk, you have a disk which is smaller. And you ask yourself the question. And if I start from another, from a, another figure, may I find the same result? Indeed, suppose that you don't have that one, but you have here something else which is small enough. So it will disappear in the erosion, and it will give the same, because this one is the same, so it will be the same erosion. So you, you have no uh, converse. Uh, it is not a group. When you erode, you cannot go back and find the initial image. And third one, for example, uh, here, have two small objects, here I have none. And again, it gives the same erosion. So, what is the inverse? So the question is not has no there is no one inverse. It's, 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 in some ways, it's like that. But there is nevertheless something good. If you take the intersection of all the inverse, it is an inverse. So there is a smaller inverse, and that is good. And the smaller inverse, it will be full of properties, and in fact, uh, the beginning of morphology could be the, the existence of the smaller inverse. It is called the opening, and this is the, the, the interesting part. So, the opening will be given, we will see after that it is a smaller inverse, but it is given as follows. You make the erosion, and you say, okay, and if I read highlight behind, with a dual, with the, a joint dilation. If I read highlight, does I find the same set? The answer is obviously no, because if you start from that, you erode, you find that. And if you dilate this disk, you find that. And that is not the same. So, sure that by redilating, you have not the same. But you have something which may have very good properties. <coughs> so, we will introduce this operation gamma 
opening by the structuring element B uh, as the product of the erosion followed by the dilation. Uh, there are two notations. Sometimes they say x minus B and then plus B. So they read this the sense, but very often in math they do the contrary. That is the first operation, that is the second operation. Okay, and you could uh, present the same notion starting from the contrary. You say, if I make first a dilation and then I erode, is the result uh, the initial set? No, it is more than the initial set, and it is what we call a closing. So if I dilate first and I erode, then I get the closing. And it is also written this way, dilates, then erodes. We have the two notations. So first they are increasing, because uh, dilation and erosion are increasing, and two, two operations increasing is still increasing. So we are... And uh, the problem of anti-extensivity or anti-extensivity. We have seen that when you dilate and erode, the extensivity depends on the location of the origin. It is not... Uh, we are not sure that it, uh, it is extensive or not. It is increasing, but no more. Here it's better. Uh, if I take uh, the law of the adjunction that uh, which was before in the other transparent, I've uh, no longer here. But okay, if I take uh, the the equivalent, which was the equivalent epsilon of x bigger than y, is equivalent to delta of x smaller than uh, to x smaller than delta of y. Uh, the, the, I can represent it, but we lose, we lose time. But we see immediately that we have the following. Just by taking the, the, good, the good parameters, the fact that we erode and we dilate is equivalent to have something, uh, sorry, the fact that we erode and we dilate is smaller than x, and it is smaller than the fact that we dilate first and erode after. Even if the structure agreement is not at the good place. Because when we dilate, we do that, and when we erode, we do that. And it can be reinterpreted also in the following sense. If I have these three equalities, suppose that I erode and I dilate, which is smaller than the identity. So by increasing this, if I erode both sides, it means that I erode this product, which is smaller than the eroded. And the same here. If I erode that, so I start from the erosion and I apply these two operations, identity or that, I have that finally, meaning that eroded, dilated, eroded appears here and there. So eroded, dilated, eroded is the same as eroded. Uh, it means if I go back. Uh, I erode, I read highlights, I find that, I erode, I, I find the same. Or here, I erode, I read highlight, and I erode again, I find the same. So as soon as I have eroded and highlighted, after if I erode, I come back to the eroded set. And that is, again, the sort of idempotence which I write. Hmm? I start from that. and continue here by putting the dilation. So I have the dilates here and there, so that the dilate of the eroded of the dilate of the eroded is the dilate of the eroded, which means that the operation is idempotent. It is just what we saw with example. So when you perform an opening, if you iterate it, it doesn't change. And the same for the closing. And now, the last point. If you have two sets which have the same eroded, hmm? you erode by B set X, and you erode by B set by X, by B set Y, and they have the same eroded. Then, the opening of the first, if you take that, the opening of the first equals, by construction, the erosion 
followed by the dilation, which is that. And since they have the same x uh, here, you draw that this dilates, which is an erosion, but it is an opening, is smaller than the initial set because the opening is not very extensive. So the opening of any set is smaller than y. So the opening here is the smallest possible one. Is it clear? Hmm? If you have two, two sets, uh, and you take the erosion and you open from the erosion, it will be always smaller than the initial set. So the opening is only the smallest one. So, geometrically speaking, we have seen that the erosion was the locus of the centers of the disk when the disk was moved inside the object. But now, to say that the point belongs to the open, to, to the open set, means that there is a certain B, it belongs to a certain B of X, and, uh, sorry, a certain B included in the initial set. So, there is X belongs to a certain B, and this BY is included in X. It means, in other words, that you take all the B which are included in X, and no longer the center, but all their points. Because we have just the center by the erosion, and by the dilation, we have all the points. So it is the zone of the initial set, which is swept by the structuring elements when it moves over the space for taking all the possible locations. For example, the structuring element cannot penetrate because it's too narrow, so that doesn't belong to the opening. It cannot penetrate here, so that doesn't belong to the opening. It penetrates here everywhere, I suppose. Here it cannot penetrate in the two big uh, columns, so that is the opening. Uh, in terms of geography, if you want, the opening uh, suppress the capes, suppress the small islands, and the, there is one figure which is missing, it suppress also the narrow isthmus, because it cannot pass. And uh, the same with the closing. If you want to think about the closing, the best is to look at the background and say it is an, it is an opening. So when you want to, to consider the closing, you dilate first and erode the set. You, you think in terms of background and you say, for the background, I open the background, which means that there are places where I cannot enter. So this sort of small cape of the background is more or less uh, Simplified. Here also, I create zones which are round because that was a peak uh, too sharp for the structuring element. And here I had the small island, which is uh, now uh, from the uh, point of view of the background that was an isthmus, and the isthmus is cut. So uh, that belongs to the brain. So the closing is extensive, it covers various places. If there was a small hole, it is, the small hole is filled up. And uh, if I have a, an isthmus, the isthmus is filled up. So they are dual of each other. Uh, for a great image, uh, we have, uh, it should be perhaps better to show the previous image. But remember, the dilation was large. No, for the opening, it has become large and then fine. And so the opening covers from above, but in a narrower way, uh, covers the, the specimen. Algebraic uh, notion of uh, opening and closing. Uh, yes, the notion of closing and opening, as we have said, is uh, an erosion followed by dilation. 
okay? Uh, in algebra, the notion were introduced by an American, an American algebraist more at the beginning of like 20th century, 1906 or something like that. And uh, he defined that as being, he defined, I think, the closing of uh, being an operation which is extensive, idempotent, and increasing in general. So we have seen that the operation we do was extensive in the case of uh, closing, uh, idempotent, and uh, increasing. So it is called uh, effectively a, a, an algebraic closing. But what is interesting, because of course we go to another model which is more general, what is interesting is that one can easily see that the union of an opening is still an opening, and the intersection of closing is still a closing. So you can open by a certain structural element, and take the result, you open by another structural element for taking other aspect of the shape. And it's still increasing and impotent and anti-extensive in case of opening. So we keep the property by making several openings and taking the union in case of opening or the intersection in case of closing. But they are not with one straight-line element, they are with many. And effectively, what can even prove that any closing in the general sense is, is an infimum of closing in the sense of uh, digression followed by the diversion. The invariant elements, okay, we pass. So here an application, uh, we have an opening we have an initial image, which is that, if you want. Uh, we can open it in different way. We can open it by a disk. Then we keep only the disk, because we play on the thickness. It is too, too fine for the disk, so it disappears. We can also open by segments. If we open by a segment which is horizontal, we keep practically everything which is horizontal. If we open by a segment which is oblique, uh, we keep that, and we take the supremum of the two openings, which is still an opening, we have that. So we, we can play on the shape we want to find. Now, something which is interesting also is when we deal with function. When it is a function, we, we open or we close level by level. Uh, the thing which is interesting is to consider the residual I go back. What is a residual? You have a certain function. You make the opening. And now you subtract the opening. What you will find? You will find the variation, which are rapid variation, and the trends or the shift which are slow will disappear. Or now, when, when you are in a room, for example, this room where you have more lights here than there, uh, you have a gradient of light. For example, here it will be a gradient of light. If it is light and dark, this zone is lighter and that is darker. And if you have the same type of object which are placed either here or there, uh, they will become darker or lighter because of the background. So if you can subtract the background, eliminate the background, then it's okay. Uh, and how to do it? But since we are sure that the opening is anti-extensive, so it is always below the image, so if you take the difference, if you take a large opening for avoiding the small detail, and you take the difference between this opening the, and the initial end of this opening, you will find the same object, but with a background, which has uh, now a uniform zero level. An example, an initial image, and uh, the opening is not written, and we take just the difference between the initial image and the opening by a certain hexagon of size 10. So we, we have suppressed, if you're on the opening, was probably the smooth, not smooth, it is below, so it's not smooth. Uh, and we take the difference, so we see better the details. Uh, this example can be commented as follows. 
you have two things here. There's a small white disc and you have long lines. It represents the retina of a diabetic person. Uh, that are the vessels and that are the aneurysms. The aneurysms make you blind locally. That is, it became blind, became blind. And if your diabetic, diabetic, diabetic disease is uh, uh, relatively hard, uh, a strong diabetes gave you the retina totally, uh, totally blind. So how to measure that? By taking a photograph of the background of the retina, you have to count this. And if you make an opening uh, by an hexagon, you will have effectively this uh, all this zone, but you will have also all that, and that are not interesting. So we have to try to find uh, a good opening for extracting the small round particle and not the long ones. Uh, so now, if we take the top hat by several segments, then we have something better. Uh, it is not perfect, but uh, it is better. What, what does it mean? Here, when I open by a disc, I keep only what is large, and what is narrow is suppressed. So if I take the complement, if I take the residual, I will have everything which is narrow. If I open by a segment, so we come back. Everything which is narrow, that is narrow, was surprised by the opening, and when I take the difference with the initial image, it is recovered. Now, if I take segments, it is relatively difficult to put the segment everywhere, so there are portions where the length is not good enough for putting the segment, so they are destroyed. So you have less the effects of the sec of the vessels, and you still have the, the effect of the small aneurysm. But uh, again, it is not perfect. The perfection arrives with another operation that we will see in two weeks. Granulometry. Uh, granulometry is uh, the idea of making a series of openings depending on a parameter. The parameter is what you call in terms of uh, physical size distribution, uh, the sieve, uh, the, the sieve, the tamis uh, of uh, particles. But granulometry works in many sense. Uh, in, uh, uh, for example, oil industry, in porous media, they send mercury under pressure and they look at uh, the granulometry, the penetration of the mercury in the porous medium. Uh, when you take the granulometry in the sense of uh, uh, statistics, it's uh, all of you which are better or higher than one, one meter uh, 75. 